Roswell Flight Test Crew here. Today we were scheduled to help some local firefighters just by doing a simple demonstration at their training center to show them how drones work. However, that changed this morning when they called and asked if we could turn out to an actual emergency. Apparently a railroad trestle caught fire yesterday and they're still on scene responding and they want to see what the drones can do. So we had a grass fire that spread to a, a bridge train trestle and uh, it's been a slow moving, uh, slow burning fire that's created uh, a bit of a scene and quite a bit of smoke uh, for the you know community and so uh, being able to uh, be out here and, and get a view of it uh, from an aerial perspective is, uh, is kind of important. Unlike our usual work with firefighters, which involves the tactical application of drones, we were actually scheduled to be working with the training department, which is interested in adding aerial video to their productions. As a result, we didn't even have a thermal imaging camera with us, but we did have three different aircraft, a unique Typhoon Q500 Plus, a DJI Phantom II, and a Vortex Hexacopter from Atlanta Hobby. The Typhoon was the first aircraft out of the box because we could quickly get it flying and easily share the video across multiple platforms like tablets and smartphones. When our new recruit Breaker arrived with the rest of our FPV gear, the stately and powerful Vortex got its turn in the sky, carrying a GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition in ProTune mode with a DJI 3-axis gimbal. Finally, we flew the DJI Phantom, although it was rigged up for doing FPV demonstrations, not aerial video, so the results didn't compare with the other two aircraft. This being the scene of an actual emergency, our demonstration got some attention from the local media. A drone flying over the train trestle that burned in Sherwood is a sign of things to come. The agency allowing that test flight yesterday has formally asked the FAA for permission to fly its own drones. K2's Bob High is live in Northeast Portland Forest now, and Bob, Oregon's Department of Forestry wants to use drones too? Yes, yeah, Steve, uh, the, these aircraft have certainly caused problems uh, flown by civilians without permission uh, while fire crews try to fight fires from the air, but the firefighting agencies and law enforcement say, officials say they can be a valuable tool saving time and money. From the air over the Sherwood trestle fire, crews could see the smoke, which parts of the trestle had already collapsed, even get close to rail cars still on the tracks. I think the crucial thing that these sorts of systems can do is provide immediate, real-time, situational awareness for the incident commander. He no longer has to guess where his people are on the ground, because he can see them. He no longer has to wonder exactly where the fire is spreading. He can see it. Volunteers from the drone enthusiast group Roswell Flight Test Crew have been helping Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue figure out how drones might help fight fires and record video for training, all from the air. It's not clear how long it will take the FAA to decide whether TVFNR will be able to fly drones and under what conditions. Its request limits flights to 400 feet above the ground and within sight of the drone operator. Oregon's Department of Forestry is also looking at flying drones, but bigger fixed wing models. It's just up in the air right at this point, excuse the pun. The agency relies on pilots and surveillance planes flying in from Boise to see edges of large wildfires now. ODF expects drones to cut flight costs by 25 to 50 percent and could be launched in a matter of minutes. We could do, put up a drone, we could have information as late as 4 a.m. and then go right into our fire briefings at fire camp at 5.30 and give the firefighters the latest and then they go right out and know exactly what's going on. Oregon's Department of Forestry was supposed to start testing drones through a public-private partnership this year, but that's been put off now until next year. They'll start testing the, by flying the drones first around controlled burns, and then in the second step, they'll actually test them around the real thing. Live in Northeast Portland, Bob High, K2 News. All right, Bob, thank you. Finally, 
This was Breaker's first deployment with us to a live incident. His experience today was really great. The guys definitely appreciated seeing uh, the live video footage. They really appreciated the, some of the high-res stills and video that we cut, captured. And being able to help them with that and bring this technology to them in a way that is positive felt really good. So that was our unexpected adventure with the firefighters. Hope you're watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe.